Hello, my name is Nancy Hagel and we're in the uh, Advanced Microscopy and Imaging Laboratory at the National Renewable Energy Lab. We're going to talk a little bit about a new technique we're developing called transport imaging. And the goal of transport imaging is to be able literally to image the motion of charge, electrons and holes inside semiconductor and other devices by monitoring the light that's emitted as some fraction of those uh, carriers recombine. In order to do this, we want to collect the light at a very high resolution. And so we do that with near field uh, scanning optical microscopy. What's unique about the approach we're taking here is that we're going to generate this charge with an electron beam. And that lets us do it at a very small location, very high resolution location. And in samples that we can see from thin films that are important for solar cells, all the way down to very tiny nanostructures, which could be the future of a lot of electronic devices. So we generate the charge. It, we cause it to move, either because charges move away in general, the diffusion process or the application of electric field, and we literally watch them move through the emission of photons. So it's a unique application of using photons to track electronic properties. Hi, uh, my name is Hilo Moutinho. I'm a scientist, uh, senior scientist uh, with the National Renewable Energy Lab, and I'm uh, one of the participants on the transport imaging project. Uh, Basically, you can do transport imaging using an optical microscope. The problem is that uh, you have uh, the diffraction limit that gives you very low resolution on your images. So we are doing the next step, which is using an NSOM. An NSOM uses very small probes at very small distances, so with this you go uh, you can break the diffraction limit and can get very high magnifications. Here you can see uh, the stage of uh, the ensemble. Uh, here is where we have uh, the sample. In this case, is a cadmium telluride sample, a very common material for photovoltaics. And here, we don't have a, we just have a, an F AFM tip, but instead of the AFM, when we do TI, we use a fiber optics. So basically, when you put the stage over the sample, and uh, this stage is going to we're going to install it in an in a electron microscope, a um, scanning electron microscope, and the beam is going to be used to generate the electrons. And uh, to detect the light from the recombination, we use the NSOM. One of the key properties of a solar cell material is that when we generate charge, which is done by the absorption of light from the sun, we need to move that charge to the carriers or to the contacts. We need to move that charge to the contacts so that we can create electricity. So the ability of charge to move effectively within a semiconductor is one of the most critical parameters in a solar cell. This technique will allow us to literally watch that motion and to relate it to material parameters, crystal growth, all the things that are important to achieve the high efficiencies that are required for successful solar cell devices. Hello everyone, my name is Nick Xiao. I'm a graduate student in Colorado School of Mines and I'm doing research at Emrio. Here is an uh, SEM image, uh, SEM equipment. Uh, we normally use SEM to take away high resolution image for semiconductor and for other kind of material. And now we're going to put our Enzyme scanner inside inside the, this SEM chamber that uh, the electron beam is going to generate the uh, uh, electrons and the light is going to emit from the semiconductor and the, our ensemble scanner is going to scan over and take very high resolution of, of, our, of the transport image. The role of electron beam is to excite photons from the semiconductor so that information can be collected by the ensemble scanner. The beam is very small and uh, it can generate in a very specific size that w that's interest and then we do use our ensemble scanner to scan the area that we're interested. We can see very high resolution images with uh, probably with uh, defects or with the brain boundaries that that is very important information for solar cell research. So in our system we we hope to get images uh, of a uh, uh, resolution of a few hundred nanometers. So if you imagine now generating charge at a point and then applying an electric field, we know that we use electric fields to move charges. In solar cells, those electric fields might be built in by the nature of, of the device. In other devices, uh, like light emitting diodes or infrared detectors, we apply an electric field. But in either case, the electric field moves the charge. So if you now imagine watching 
a, a transport image. As we push the electric field one way and then the other, we actually can see the electrons sloshing to the left, to the right, and again, we're doing this by watching the light that those electrons emit when they, they recombine. The work here is unique in that we are the only group I know of, or perhaps few groups, that are using electron beams to generate the charge and the near-field optics to observe it. So by coupling E-beam techniques to optical techniques, we believe we can press uh, new resolution limits and make this technique valuable for a large number of materials and devices.